formed men. Now we have another fellow who was a little different. This, this man is known as the wittiest man at the convention. What does witty mean? Yeah, he, he kind of kept things lively. And this man's name is Governor Morris. He was only 36 years old. Governor Morris. Turn to Morris here. Listen to what his colleague says about Governor Morris. Are you with me? Page 24, Roman numeral, XXIV, down at the bottom. The beginning of the quote. His friend says, one of the geniuses in whom every species of talents combine to render him conspicuous and flourishing in public debate. He winds through all the mazes of rhetoric and throws around him such a glare that he charms, captivates, and leads away the senses of all who hear him. Have you ever met a person like that? Charms, captivates, and leads away the senses of all who hear him. Yeah. This, this must have been an incredible guy. This fellow was a lawyer, but guess what? He didn't like law, and so it says he turned merchant. Governor Morris, 36 years old, and is anybody, can anybody tell me what Governor Morris was responsible for authoring, for writing? Actually, the beginning of the Constitution, which is known as the preamble. For the, for the first time, somebody actually sat down and wrote the first or the six great purposes of a good government. That's all in the preamble, which we will memorize in this class. Okay? Governor Morris, here's another one. William Patterson, just right across the page from Governor Morris, up a little bit. Do you see the picture of William Patterson? What's your first impression when you look at him? Huh? Well, look at what his friend said about him. He says, one of those kind of men whose powers break in upon you and create wonder and astonishment. You ever had, met a somebody like that? Just immediately captivate your attention. He is a man of great modesty, now get this part, with looks that bespeak talents of no great extent. <laughs> What's he saying here? To look at him, you wouldn't think what? Wouldn't think he had much going for him. With looks that bespeak talents of no great extent. But when he opens his mouth, does that give us some hope for some of us? Okay. All right. William Patterson. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. We all know this person. What do you think they said of George Washington? What did George Washington want to be? Did he want to be there? Did he campaign to be there? What did he want to be? Contented with being only a plain citizen. Didn't want to be at the convention, didn't want to be president of the United States. He wanted to be a farmer. But uh, looked up to probably more than anybody at the convention. Last person I want to talk to you about, and I hope you take the time to review all of these, I'm just pointing out some highlights here, is James Wilson, right across from George Washington. James Wilson was uh, born in Scotland, had a Scottish accent. You talk about people who know things. Listen to what his colleagues said ranks among the foremost in legal and political knowledge. Uh, skip down the line. Government seems to have been his peculiar study. All the political institutions of the world he knows in detail. Did you get that? He can describe every political situation in the world in detail. Now get this part and can trace the causes and effects of every revolution from the earliest stages of the Grecian Commonwealth down to the present time. 
Did you hear that? If you were writing a constitution, would you want James Wilson on your team? Yep. He was there. You could ask this guy about any uh, country that has ever existed on this planet. And if there was anything written about it in their form of government, he could tell you how it came about, what the weaknesses, what the strengths were of that form of government. I mean, this James Wilson was incredible. Do you get the feeling that this was an assemblage of pretty powerful people? 55. Well, it uh, certainly was. Now, on the next page, the list of other personalities. I asked you before, do you see some there you recognize? Look through that list quickly. Ronnie? It says that George Worth was the law teacher. Law teacher of two future presidents. I know one of those is Jefferson. Who's the other one? I didn't know that. Uh, James Madison, I believe. James Madison? Yeah. James, uh, John, uh, George Wythe was uh, the first law professor in the United States. Do you see some of these other names here, James? You said that I law professors, I did a lot about legal stuff. Yes. law Uh, mostly having to do with, with governmental law. You see, by this time, William Blackstone had written his famous contrary, co commentaries on the laws of England. Uh, basically, the common law, the law which is common to everybody. Remember studying this? Natural law, common law, as well as the statutes that were written. And you, you get people studying these, and George Wythe pointing his students to these kinds of studies. Is it any wonder that they came up with a Thomas Jefferson, whom we'll study tomorrow? Look at some of these other names. Do you recognize some of these? What other names do you see here? John Jay, first Chief Justice. Who else? Samuel Adams, father of the American Revolution. Who else? How about John Hancock, Patrick Henry, James Monroe, future president. Thomas Jefferson, Richard Henry Lee, John's, John Marshall. Anyway, some great names here. Now I want you just to flip through this book for a minute and you'll see where some of these people are quoted, mostly in the latter 700 pages of this book. Have you, have you done that? You'll see that Dr. Skousen has actually quoted from these people and you see their name in bold. And if you wonder, well, who's Davis, or who's Strong, or who's Madison, or who's McLean? One of the 121 people that are listed here. That's who they are, okay? These are the people that we call the Founding Fathers. Okay.